Hello everyone, this video we're going to walk through the process we use for building these three rods you see here in front of me. Uh, these are vertical jigging rods for walleyes. They're built on medium and medium light action blanks. The process is essentially the same for building virtually any rod that you're going to build. Um, so we're going to go through step by step on how we did this. And if you have any questions when the video is done, feel free to leave those down below. Happy to answer them. Otherwise, enjoy. Thank you. So assuming you have your blank and components all picked out, the first step here is going to be to start dry fitting your handle components. The way I do that is I gather all my components, lay them out, get a rough idea where I want them, um, and then I'm going to start alternating between sliding them onto the rod and see where they get to, and then reaming them using a reaming tool. You can see me using one here in this video. You can get those from virtually any rod building supplier. Uh, you can also get them that fit in your cordless drill, which are very nice. Step two in this process, once we have the handle laid out the way we like, is we're going to glue those components on. I like to take, as I have them laid out, and I'll mark out the location for the rear grip, the foregrip, and the reel seat, and use a pencil or something like that on the rod blank. Then once you have those marked out, we'll take those off the rod, mix up a two-part rod building epoxy, and we're going to spread that around the blank in the location where each piece goes. You'll slide those on one at a time and as you do it you'll notice that you push a lot of the glue uh, with the component that you're putting on. So when you're putting on the rear grip here you're going to push a bunch of that glue out to the back. Just take your finger and wipe that off or take a rag, get that nice and cleaned off before you move on to the next one. Once we have everything on what I'm going to do here is spine the blank and in order to do that Essentially what you do is you apply a little bit of pressure to um, a part of the blank. I like to do it around the middle of the blank. That way you get kind of that heavier spine down towards the base. It's a little easier to feel too. And you're going to apply a little pressure while you rotate it. And what you'll find is that the rod sort of snaps into place. I like to lay it out like that and then match my handle up exactly to that spine. Uh, it, it's not a necessary step. Some production rods don't do it. I like to do it. I think it gives me a little better performance. So then we'll get all those glued on, wipe our glue off, and we're going to let that cure for, uh, I usually leave them for sit for about a day, and then I'm going to move on to putting my guide, rod guides on. All right, so we've got our reel handle done. Next step is the guide. So I'm using a Fuji KR Concept series of guides on this rod. And so I'm gonna use the KR Concept guide software. I'll flash that across the screen. You can also just Google that. Um, any similar style of rods will work with that. If you're using a very different style, you might wanna look up a guide placement chart. Most guide series will have a guide placement chart um, that you can look up for those, those guides. So once we know about where our guides are going to go, um, we're going to take our measurements from the tip of the reel and I'll measure out and I'll make a mark with my rod pencil, my rod building pencil, and lay all those out from reel to tip. Once I get all those laid out, I'm going to kind of eyeball it, see if it looks about like I wanted. On this one, I ended up adding another guide. Um, so even though the software said to only use three guides um, at the end, the guide train at the end, I decided to use four. So. But that's kind of a personal choice and something you'll have to figure out as you go along. Once you have your guides set in place and you have the layout that you want, it's time to wrap them on with some thread. To start a guide wrap, what we're going to do, you're going to take your, your thread off of your wrapper. You're going to drape it over the rod. So you have, essentially, you've got a main line from your spool to the rod, and then you've got that tag in that's on the other side of the rod. You can wrap that tag end twice in the direction of the guide. Then you're going to hold that with your finger on the back side and you're going to set the main line across those two wraps. 
And so that'll essentially make a cross there, which is gonna hold the thread in place. Then you do a couple of wraps. Once you've got two or three wraps in, you can kind of let your fingers off of there. It'll start to wrap itself. And then I like to wrap four to six thread wraps with that tag end being wrapped underneath of it. And then after that, you can cut it off. Then you'll continue wrapping up towards the guide. At the guide foot, if you have a very thick guide foot, it can be helpful to take that and sand it down on, uh, on a fairly fine piece of sandpaper just to make that a little easier for the thread to climb up on the very tip of that guide foot. Um, in this case, I didn't need to on these. These are pretty small guides and the thread ran right up onto them. So you continue wrapping until you're about halfway up the guide foot. At that point, you can remove your tape. Then before you get to the end of the guide here, you're going to want to take a loop of thread and slide it up on the back side underneath the main line thread wrap. That way um, you can use that loop to pull your thread through when you're done. I like to have this underneath about six to eight, six to ten, something like that, um, threads at the very end of the guide. So when you have what you think are about six to ten um, wraps remaining before you get to the end of the guide foot, slide that loop up on the back side, finish your wrap, and then you're going to hold everything in place while you cut your main thread wrap off. Once you get that cut off, you take the tag end, stick it through your loop, and then pull the two tag ends of the loop. And what that'll do is pull your thread back underneath of your wrap and hold it in place. One thing to note here is you don't need to be too concerned about lining those guides up uh, as you're wrapping, because once you're done wrapping, you'll be able to slide them around the blank a little bit so you can line them up with your real seat once you've got done with the wraps on them. If you would like a hook keeper on your rod, now is also the time to do that. To do the rod tip, all I'm gonna do is cut some real thin slivers of hot glue and stick them down inside the tip. Then I'll hold on to that with a piece of needle nose pliers and warm the tip up so that the glue melts and stick it on and line it up with your rod guides. Final step here, we're gonna apply a finish to our rod threads. I'm gonna use a two part pro coat epoxy. That's a fairly common one available at most rod building suppliers. All we're gonna do for this is we're gonna mix that up and we're gonna put our rod in a rod turner. Now you can see mine is a homemade one I made out of a barbecue rotisserie. So we'll mix that up and then we're gonna take a small paintbrush and apply that to the threads. I like to have a little bit of epoxy over the threads, that way it gets kind of that smooth epoxy look to it. I like that look. You can also put a little bit above and below the threads so you get that sort of taper from the threads down to the blank kind of look. And you can do the same thing with the tip. I put just a little bit around the tip guide at the at the very base there. Once you've completed all your, your wraps with the finish, all we're gonna do is leave it on this rod turner until that's fully cured. And at that point, we'll have a brand new fishing rod. We'll be ready to go fishing.